Well, I'm Chief Meteorologist Wayne Hart, joined by my colleague, meteorologist Ron Rhodes. And it yep. certainly hasn't felt a lot nope. like winter this week, <laughs> but it is winter in the tri-state. And are you ready? That's right. And for the next half hour, your Weather Authority team is going to break down what you can expect for this winter season and how you can be prepared. And Ron, as we know, the tri-state has experienced all kinds of different yeah. weather during the winter seasons, from really cold ones yep. to unseasonably warm ones. That's right, Wayne. Some winters, the tri-state have seen a lot of snow. Now, the last major snow fall we had was back in 2004. Remember this? Fort Branch, Indiana. On December 22nd, 2004, 20 inches of snow fell with drifts up to five feet. Let's take a look at the snowfall amounts for the region that year. Evansville, they saw 18 to 24 inches across the area. Wow. But some of our worst tornadoes have also occurred during the winter season, and that was yeah. the case back in 2000 when a tornado rolled through Owensboro. An F3 caused millions of dollars in damage. More than 700 homes were damaged or destroyed, but fortunately, no one was killed. That's right. A lot of people around here also remember the winter of 2009 and the ice storm we had back then. That storm dropped up to two inches of ice through much of western Kentucky, including Muhlenberg, Hopkins, and Ohio County. More than 90% of people lost power for as long as three weeks. And the storm was also blamed for 14 deaths in Kentucky and Missouri. Certainly one that we're never going to forget. That was a once-in-a-lifetime event. Meteorologist Joe Bird is in Hopkins County, where he talked with officials about the night the ice storm hit. And Wayne and Ron, I'm inside the Emergency Operations Center in Hopkins County. Very quiet, but that was not the case nearly 12 years ago. When you think about severe weather or just weather events in general, it's usually localized to maybe a small area or a small community, but nearly 12 years ago, it was not. This room was very busy. We're talking about the 2009 ice storm. Rex everywhere on the parkway, the interstate, uh, and everywhere. It was something that I never imagined would would happen here in Hopkins County. Every member of the National Guard was deployed during the 2009 ice storm, which was unprecedented. It was an event that many thought would never end. Trees falling, limbs falling. I mean, you can hear all that stuff all night long. The evening of January 26, 2009, what looked like rain was far from reality. Rain quickly froze, forming ice on every surface. Deputy Jonathan Barnes said as the ice continued to form, calls to dispatch increased. We have family members calling in from other states, wanted us to go check on these people. So, I mean, it was always constantly somebody calling in to want to check on their on their family. Deputy Lydon Logan was working a 12-hour shift that night, saying it looked like a war zone. Um, I remember going down Beulah Road. It was just one lane. There was ro uh, trees down on the roadway. You had to, it was like a maze. You had to go down the, the road just back and forth. EMA Director Nick Bailey said at one point, 95% of the county was without power, and the focus became on those who needed it to survive. One thing we were doing is trying to deliver these portable oxygen tanks to people that actually were oxygen dependent. The county needed emergency assistance from Frankfurt, and with no electricity, they had to use technology dating back to the early 1900s. They were able to actually get the word. Initial word of our declaration of emergency went out on January the 27th to Frankfurt that morning via ham radio. By the end, the county was covered in at least an inch and a half of ice. Fully restoring power took three weeks with a focus on how to prevent such historic damage in the future. Electrical companies, they beefed up their infrastructure, you know, set new poles, uh, set better grade poles. And of course, with every winter weather, or severe weather event, there's a financial impact to that. And let's look at this, an astounding number here. Over the past 25 years in Hopkins County, they spent about $27 million in cleanup efforts. And just that total right there, 25 million of it was just the 2009 ice storm. Wayne and Ron. We got to enjoy a nice autumn for a change here in the Tri-State that closed out on a warmer and drier note in the month of November. But will our luck hold out for the next three months? This is going to be what we call a La Nina winter, where the equatorial sea surface temperatures out in the Pacific Ocean are trending cooler than normal. And in this situation, it's often a strong factor in terms of how the weather patterns are going to set up across North America, which means our confidence for this winter outlook is a little higher than usual. And we'll start with the month of December, which did start off on a chilly note, but it looks like as we head through the rest of the month, we'll be trending warmer than normal with above normal precipitation 
But the warm temperatures knocking down the snowfall to nothing in some areas to maybe three inches. But our odds for a white Christmas looking pretty low. But keep in mind, they are generally only about 10% in this part of the country. Now, January will continue the warmer than normal trend. Precipitation will come down a bit, but a more active pattern may lead to a slightly above normal snowfall at about three to six inches. February also looking warmer than normal. Precipitation near normal, but with the general warm Warmer February temperatures, that knocks our snowfall back down to one to four inches across the tri-state. But the signal for February is that it could be a stormy month. This wetter and warmer than normal pattern for winter may really get going in February. And that could lead to increased chances for severe weather, especially towards the latter half of the winter season. Snowfall wise, it looks like it will be below normal, about 5 to 13 inches across the tri state, 7 to 11 inches in the Evansville metro. And though that is below the averages, it'll be a lot more than last winter when the Evansville airport measured officially only a trace of snow. Joining us now is Rick Shanklin, the Warning Coordination Meteorologist with the National Weather Service Office in Paducah, Kentucky. That's the office responsible for most of our tri-state counties. And Rick, thanks for joining us today. We're coming off actually a pretty nice autumn. We had a fall this year. And now as we move into the winter season, I think most of us are agreeing that this is going to be a warmer and wetter than normal winter. But what are the factors driving that outlook? Well, really, the uh, overriding factor is the La Nina pattern that's uh, been in place and is expected to continue throughout the course of the winter. So uh, that basically, you know, creates a, a pattern where a more active pattern. You mentioned above normal precipitation, which is a common uh, thing we see with the La Nina, at least in the Ohio Valley. And, and that bears out, too, when we look at some of the past years or La Nina winters. Uh, that's been the case. Well, these are certainly uh, educated guesses when it comes to seasonal outlooks, but the La Nina, the cooler than normal equatorial Pacific, seems to be a pretty strong driver. Now, the wetter than normal pattern, will this also mean a stormier winter with an increased threat for severe weather? Yeah, unfortunately, the, the statistics are fairly pronounced when you look at that. For our region, uh, most of the tornado activity that we've had in the cool season through now through March, uh, especially the EF2, the strong to violent tornadoes in our region have been in those La Nina winters. So uh, that, that's certainly a concern. Now, what about snow? We've got the, the wetter than normal pattern, but it's also going to be on the warm side. Do you think we're going to be able to squeeze out some snow this winter? Because last season, we had just a trace officially in Evansville. You know, based on past La Nina winters and all that uh, we won't see as many the frequent snowfalls but uh, certainly you know, one or two of the bigger snowfalls uh, uh, could certainly occur easily in a, in a La Nina winter. Rick Shanklin with the National Weather Service. Thank you Rick for joining us to today. Well, winter weather and your car coming up. How can you prepare your vehicle for the winter ahead? That and more on Winter in the Tri-State. Are you ready? Well, when heading out into the cold, it's important to know your vehicle's prepared for the elements. And it's also important to have a list of items in your car in case you get stranded. Meteorologist Stacy May has some tips. Well, Rain and Ron, it is certainly that time to be thinking about how you should prepare yourself for the winter season in your car. So to help us do that, uh, I brought in Sergeant Todd Ringo with the Indiana State Police. And when I kind of contacted you about this, uh, Sergeant Ringo, you told me something that I maybe didn't know, but most people don't have a winter survival kit in their car. That's absolutely correct. A lot of people just don't think that they need one simply mm -hmm. because they feel like if they have a crash or their vehicle breaks, down, all they have to do is call 911 and help 
is sent. But people need to realize that in very rural areas, it may take law enforcement or even a tow truck over an hour to get to you during a winter event. Yeah, so you do need to be prepared for several hours possibly to be stuck somewhere. What are the most important things that you think people should have? Well, people need to have items inside their vehicle to keep them warm and safe mm -hmm. for an extended period of time. So, so yeah. the blankets are very nice to have, uh, gloves, a stocking cap, maybe boots in case you have to get out and dig right. out your car. The first aid kit is also extremely very important. Uh, we have protein bars, bottled water. Uh, again, you want to make sure that you have items uh, to drink and eat right. for an extended period of time. For several hours. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then also, the candle is something very nice to have. Yeah. If for some reason your vehicle breaks down and you can't start your car, you want to stay warm inside okay. your vehicle so you can light a candle. And it's amazing how much, you know, warm temperature that right. will uh, generate throughout the car. And this is one that I certainly did not think about when you kind of gave me a list of things to make sure uh, that we were going to talk about. This is one I wouldn't have thought about. So the candle is very important. And then when you have the candle, you got to have... You have to have the lighter. <laughs> exactly. You got to have the lighter or some matches too. Absolutely. Um, so that's another thing. And then of course, sometimes this could be at night when you get stuck, which would obviously be one of the worst times. Yes. Yeah, so having a flashlight right. is also very mm -hmm. nice to have. Um, and then also... You have your batteries. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times, you, you know, a flashlight may the batteries may die, right. so having uh, extra batteries. And then a shovel is also very important. You may get stuck, but you just need to get out and right. use your shovel, dig some snow around your tires, and you're free to go. All right. Well, thank you so much for all these great tips today. We certainly appreciate it, and we are going to get our winter survival kits ready for our car. Always important yes. to have. You know, yeah. Wayne, with all the weather technology we mm -hmm. have for forecasting, still a lot of people still to this day will turn to nature for sure signs do. in nature of what the upcoming winter will, will bring, you know? So yeah. who better to talk to mm -hmm. than our garden guy, Charlie Stocker, about something yeah. in nature? And so I went to Charlie's place the other day, and we went under his persimmon tree, because mm -hmm. that's one of those signs of nature. You cut open the persimmon seed. Right. You know, people look at woolly worms and all that kind of stuff. Well, here's what Charlie had to say as we cut open a persimmon right. seed to see what this winter, at least what nature Nature is saying this winter is going to be like. A lot of people still look to nature to see signs for winter and how bad the winter is going to be. A lot of people look at woolly worms. The darker the woolly worm, the colder the winter. Horse hair, if it's thicker, that means it's going to be a colder winter, too. And also, we got hornet's nests. If they're built high up in trees, that means it's going to be more snow. The lower the hornet's nest, the less snow there's going to be. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If there's anybody who knows about nature, it's our own <laughs> garden guy, Charlie Stocker, and especially persimmons, because you make a mean persimmon pudding. Oh, yes. And I've, I've benefited from that. Yes. Although I don't think I did this past year. I didn't make them this uh, year. No. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for nothing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> here's the deal, though. I mean, with, with persimmons, you're supposed to be able to cut open the seeds. And we've done mm -hmm. this before, Charlie. Mm -hmm. but I'm just going to let the viewers know this. You cut open the seed, and every seed has a little shape inside. It's either a spoon, a knife, or a fork. And I've seen all three over the years. Yes. Now, a fork means it's going to be a mild winter. If it's shaped like a knife, that means it's going to be a cold winter. And if it's shaped like a spoon, that means a lot of snow. Right. Have you been cutting open these persimmon seeds? I have yet? been. Okay. You're gnawing on one right now. Uh, well, I have to get them soft because they're an extremely hard, extremely hard seed. So we'll see without cutting my hand. If yeah, you, it, it's really tough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you okay. don't need to be holding persimmons. Yep. And the thing is with these things, I mean, they're shaped like a utensil on the inside. And I don't know how well the forecasting accuracy is for these persimmon seeds. You know, more times than not, it's true. Yeah, but it happens a lot. Now, I've noticed a few other people have cut open persimmon seeds in the area, and they've seen some spoons out there. Let's uh -huh. see what Charlie, if Charlie can get this okay. open. All right, and there you go. You cut it open, Charlie. You, you, you can see the handle of it. You can yeah. see it's a, it's a spoon. It's mm -hmm. not as distinct as some of these we've seen, but that yeah. definitely looks like a spoon right and there. And every time, it'll be the, yeah. it'll, they're, they're all spoons. This year, they're all spoons. Yeah, and the ones I've gotten from other viewers were all spoons, too, which is a sign we're shoveling snow. Yeah. Uh, we've had already a little shot I'm of snow. I'm ready for that. I'm ready for that. Yes, we I want to see some to snow. We saw no snow last year. I know. And hopefully, we'll get a little more snow. If the persimmon seeds are correct, then we'll be shoveling a lot of, <laughs> we'll be shoveling a lot of snow. No, this winter. Hey, Charlie, I appreciate it. I'm glad you got a sharp knife. Yeah. These things are, don't try this at home without a sharp knife and make sure, make sure you don't cut your fingers anyway. Yeah. yeah, I'll tell you what. Up next, you can keep your house warm without running up the power bill. We have some tips for you coming up after the break.
As we head into the winter season, there's a fair amount of people who are looking forward to some snow, but we can get anything from a cold rain to a heavy snow during the winter and everything in between. What causes the different types of precipitation that we see around here during the winter? It's a process where warm air is overriding cold air or the cold air is undercutting the warm air and that leads to the different types of precipitation that we see around here during the winter time. And in many winter storms, we start off warm with just plain old rain and then we transition to snow. And this is how it all works. When the air is above freezing from ground level all the way up to several thousand feet in the atmosphere, it's warm enough for just a plain old rain. But as the cold air comes in, it undercuts the warm air. Cold air is denser and heavier, so you still have rain falling aloft, and then it goes into this very shallow layer of sub-freezing temperatures, and this creates freezing rain, a glaze of ice that hopefully doesn't last very long, but when it does, you can get an ice storm like we did back in 2009. Now, as that cold layer gets a little deeper, you have the rain still coming out of the clouds, but it has time to freeze into ice pellets before it hits the ground. That's what we call sleep, and that can accumulate some. Doesn't normally last very long, but we had a sleet storm about 10 or 15 years ago that led to one to three inches of sleet, and that was a mess to drive in. But the, the freezing rain and sleet can really create tricky uh, driving conditions especially the black ice that forms in freezing rain and especially on elevated surfaces. You want to just keep that steering wheel straight. Don't brake and just let your foot off the gas and let your vehicle slowly uh, decelerate in that black ice situation. But then as that cold layer of air gets deeper and deeper from the ground level all the way into the clouds, it's just plain old snow. And that's so much easier to forecast. If it's all falling as snow, it's a little easier to figure out how much will accumulate. But when you're going from rain to snow, well, some of that snow is going to melt. How much will accumulate? Or if it starts as snow and then changes to rain, how much of it is going to wash away? And that's a challenge we face with most winter storms here in the tri-state. Earlier we talked about preparing your car for the winter season, but what about your home? Meteorologist Stacy May found out how you can stay warm in your home this winter and avoid running up a big power bill. Well, Ron and Wayne, we have certainly started feeling the colder temperatures, so we want to give you some quick tips now on what you can do to get your home ready for winter. So we brought in our plumbing expert right now, Jason uh, Drake from J.E. Shuckle. Thanks for joining us and give us an idea about some of your best tips for what we should do right now. Some of the best tips I'd recommend is disconnecting your hose from your hose bib mm -hmm. to keep it from freezing up or freezing anything inside the crawl space. You can pick up one of these hose bib covers at your local hardware store. And they just screw right onto the hydrant. Yeah, so that's an easy one. Now we also want to talk about some of our foundation vents too. So let's go talk about those. So Jason, show us what to do around our uh, foundation vents here. Walk around, look at your vents, and just push them closed. Mm -hmm. So it'll keep all the cold air out to keep the pipes from freezing. That's awesome. And then inside, what are some quick things that we can do? Inside, I'd recommend letting your faucets drip. And as on extreme cases, I would open your cabinet doors. What does that do? To let the warm air in to keep the pipes from freezing. All right. Thank you so much, Jason, for those Thank tips. You. We certainly appreciate it. And next, we are going to talk to our HVAC expert and find out what to do about our furnace to keep you and your family warm this winter. We have made it now to where the furnace is located, and we've got our HVAC expert, Marcos Barrera, with us. Now, Marcos, can you tell us what are the most important things that you think we can do to get our furnace ready for the winter? Well, I think there's two important things that we could do is, one, change the filter, because it's the life of the system. Many of our calls are made um, for dirty filters, it shuts the system overheats and it shuts down. The second is batteries. Um, a lot of times you have hardwire systems that don't require batteries, but you have a lot of people they forget about the 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 batteries and the thermostat will shut off or be weak. And you will see it, but it won't be able to have enough power to switch and turn it on to heat. So these things are pretty simple that oh, anybody yeah. can these do? These are simple stuff that people could do. It's safe. Mm -hmm. Now, if it comes to something major, you, something you don't understand, mm -hmm. when it comes to gas and electric, have a professional uh, come out and do your maintenance. 
Okay, but these things are great that we can do right now and get us ready for the winter, right? Right, and it yeah. will save you some money in exactly, the future. Exactly, in the long run. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank I you. I appreciate it. Another quick tip for you, too, is to make sure this is a good time of the year that you check your batteries on your carbon monoxide detectors and your smoke alarms, too. Wayne and Ron? Thank you, Stacy. When we come back, winter weather and science. Booked on science and eyewitness news, meteorologist Jason Lindsay shows us a delicious way to enjoy the snow. Welcome back. It's hard to say how much snow we might get in the Tri-State this year, but if we do get some snow this season, there are a lot of fun things you and your family can do when you're stuck inside. Yes, Jason Lindsay shows us how you can turn snow into a frozen treat. Yum. Hey friends, how are you? You just found out it's a snow day here in the Tri-State and you're wondering, what in the world am I going to do to keep these kids busy? I have an idea for you. It's both fun and educational. Why not create a batch of snow ice cream? It sounds delicious, right? All you need are a few ingredients from around the house, and of course, that snow outside. I have about a half of a gallon of snow inside of my gigantic bowl. Over here in this blue cup, a cup of sugar. Here, I have about a teaspoon of vanilla, and over here, about a cup of evaporated milk. I'm going to pour all of that inside of my bowl with a whole bunch of snow, and we're going to mix it up. Now, as I'm mixing this up, I'm going to tell you the science behind it. The science is pretty pretty simple. It's all about matter. Matter is anything that takes up space and has mass. Matter can exist in three main states, a solid, a liquid, and a gas. I'm breathing in a gas. The evaporated milk was a liquid and the snow, you got it. It's a solid. I'm going to keep mixing this up. We describe matter by its observable properties. By the way, this is an experiment you can eat. We typically don't eat in science class, but you can on a snow day. Keep mixing it up. This is pretty delicious. Made this as a kid. Okay, here we go. Test taste time. Mmm. I think that's better than the real stuff you buy at the store. Wow. Pretty cool. For Hooked on Science, I'm Jason Lindsay. That's good. Yeah, all right. Well, thanks for joining us for Winter in the Tri-State. Are you ready? Stay warm, stay safe, and count on your weather authority to keep you up to date.